as we make landfall in New Caledonia. Arriving to a new country is like opening a present. You never know quite what you're going to find, and it's always an adventure. That's pretty good, Dad. That's like the finest smoothie I've ever had. <laughs> So we were running down wind most of the night and um, the weather is actually going to turn around and come from the southeast in the next couple of days is that we make our final approach to Numea. And uh, so what we've actually done is jibed away and we're working our way slightly to the south so that when that uh, wind does come around we'll be able to sort of turn around and be on a beam reach or run back down wind again to Numea. So hopefully that'll pay off for us. Yeah, so at least it'll keep the wind on our beam and uh, it might put a, a few more miles on the trip but it'll make for a much more comfier ride. Yeah, so we had this really strange experience last night where the boat kind of got lifted up and it was like she was going over judder bars like this. It was a really strange experience. There was still the motion of the swell rolling through underneath the boat but there was this distinct like we got lifted up and judded like judded through this period for about 30 seconds to a minute it was really strange and Darren didn't feel it because he was he was asleep but I certainly felt it. I was out here in the cockpit and I think I'm thinking maybe a tectonic plate moved or there was an earthquake or or something occurred I'm gonna have to look it up when we get back in the land of internet and see if I can find it because it was such a strange occurrence in all my years of sailing I've never felt anything like it ever to be lifted up and then have this but 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 like this, the whole boat shuddered. I was really surprised you didn't wake up. Maybe uh, maybe we ran over a few whales or something. <laughs> maybe we ran over a few whales. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We ran over a pot of whales. Oh. So little life we take for granted when we finish our decisions. Empty-handed words. We are a sailing vessel, five nautical miles on your port bow. Do you copy? Certainly uh, pays to call them guys up. Lucky Maggie did because uh, that guy out there, he certainly didn't see us. And he was sharing our, our rum line and um, could have been a bit of a problem there. So that's a really good example actually of how collisions at sea can occur because they were only five nautical miles away from us when we saw them and uh, they came up on our AIS and uh, they were, we were on a direct collision course with them. And when I called them up, they didn't know we were there. So uh, yeah, always good to make a practice of calling them up just to say hello, letting them know you're around. Because that guy's traveling at 23 knots <laughs> and that, he's gone past in about half an hour, so. Well, an uh, eventful few hours going on for us just previously. Uh, we had a squall come over and we were reefing the uh, main down and in order to do that we uh, filled the headsail and uh, lost the halyard on the headsail as we were filling it. So we're now running under storm sail and full main. 
So that's kept us busy for the last three hours or so. So yeah, a bit of a mess to clean up. I'm just having a bit of a break. Darren is down below getting a rest. And uh, I'm just going to send some messages off to the folks at home and um, tell them everything is dandy because I'm a bit late on my 12 hour deadline. And then I'll continue cleaning up as we say along. So this is very exciting, this is our last morning at sea. So in about uh, maybe another three or four hours, we should make the outside reef at Yumea. Uh, and then we'll, we'll have another couple of hours or a few hours of going from the outer reef into Port Moselle. And we shall be in Numea, New Caledonia, a new country. How exciting! So it's been a pretty full on 24 hours. We've had uh, lots of sail changes, lost the gym, put up a storm sill, had no wind, had lots of wind, had no swell, had big swell. <laughs> So it's all happened in the last 24 hours, but you know, it's just, this is what it's all about. These challenges make us stronger and more appreciative of where we are in life, I think. I think Darren would both agree with that, so yeah, very excited. Anyway, we shall get ready to go through the passage. How exciting! <laughs> yeah, baby! We had found ourselves in a sailing mecca surrounded by a pristine reef system, but before we could get out exploring we had to make repairs. What's happening my honey? Oh the things that go bang in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah we're dropping the furler down, we've, we've copped a little bit of damage on our passage. The hoey had broke and it's gone around the, the wire that runs through there and it's it's twisted all the wire. So um, unfortunately we've got to drop it down and replace the wire and it's anyway, that's what we're up to today. It had been an interesting week trying to bridge the language barrier to find a replacement headstay for our furler. But we've been lucky enough to stumble across Laurent, who is the man to see for all things boats. Laurent doesn't have much English. And we didn't have much French, but he's sailed around the world three times and understands budget cruising. So with lots of gesturing, quite a bit of laughter and some drawings, we got to the core of the issue. And he was kind enough to offer us his dock for a few hours so that we could dismantle our rig. Bonjour. <laughs> With the furler off, we decided to stretch our legs, then provision up to get out of town for a while. Is this the last time I can see you in a while? Look at this gorgeous day, it's so good to be out here. We left in a cold Australian winter and we've come to beautiful New Caledonia. It's so much warmer here, it's just lovely. Yeah, so today we are travelling off to a place called Earlot Mato and uh, it's uh, a little islet which has apparently got some really great snorkeling and diving so we're really keen to get to have a look out there and see what it's like. Yesterday we were sitting having lunch and a dugong popped up right beside the boat. You wouldn't believe it and we've seen so many dolphins just... I haven't been able to catch them on the camera for you but they're just cruising along here so I'm so looking forward to getting underwater. Yeah baby! We are at Elot Mato and it looks beautiful. A little bit chilly. <laughs> Your Caledonia in winter is a little bit chilly. But it's warmer than Brisbane, uh, baby. <laughs> but it is. Anyway, we're going to go and check out what we can find underwater. Uh, looks gorgeous, this beautiful reef. Off we go. Oh yeah, we're all rubbed up. Yeah, baby.
also a, a lovely French gentleman just come over with a couple of extra fish and uh, he reckons he was having a bad day but yeah he brought over this uh, <laughs> he's done pretty well hasn't he he done all right he brought over this nice little trout and I think that's a trigger fish that he uh, suggested that's really good raw yeah so I'll be interested to try that one out how lucky are we yeah good stuff <laughs> the sharks had followed us home so we decided to hang the fillet down for a bit of fishy fun Shark is going to eat your camera! Oh no, shark attack. Yes, I was cleaning them a couple of fish and I thought, oh well, I've seen these guys circling around. They knew I had a couple of fish on board and I thought, oh, I'll stick a line out and uh, just have a play with them. There's three of them swimming around here now. <laughs> They're all hungry for a Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Took them a while to get here, but unfortunately dinner's over. <laughs> <laughs> 